world that's turning drier and hotter every year. The brave men and women on the front lines of firefighting are facing a bigger challenge than ever. 30 years ago, it was about a million firefighters across the United States. Today, 30 years later, it's about a million one, million two. Almost the same number of firefighters, but the number of fires, number of incidents, number of calls have gone, have gone up. So how do you get to the point of doing more with less or more with the same? The answer, of course, is, is technology. In recent years, California has become ground zero in the race to develop new technology to prevent and fight fires. The tools and the resources that we have in firefighting, they are all circa 1900s, 1950s. You know, if you're a firefighter and you give me a piece of technology or you give me an ax, one of them takes batteries, one doesn't. One may work 99% of the time, the other works 100% of the time. So it's a, it's a hard sell in that, in that regard. Mike Ralston believes cutting edge tech deserves a place in the toolkit alongside axes and shovels. I started off my career working at NASA as a rocket scientist, but I'd always had a, a yearning to, to be in, in the service field. And then I started to realize as I got into firefighting more and more that the uh, innovation and, and advent of advanced technology that we're very used to here in Silicon Valley hasn't yet made its way into firefighting. Mike's mission is to change all that by giving firefighting a smart technology upgrade, starting with a whole new breed of emergency vehicle. Now this vehicle that we're looking at here, I helped design over the course of about a year, uh, is called the M-Star, for Mobile Special Technology and Aerial Response. If you take a look at how this vehicle is set up, it's really broken out into quadrants. This front quadrant over here is set up for remote operations, whether it's a drone or a robot. Some, some uh, jurisdictions use you know, land-based robots. The second quadrant is this area that we're standing in right here, the command interface area. We would have a command vehicle set up. Let's say they're working at their, at their console here, and they can turn around and they could say, Mike, I need X, Y, Z. Can you get me, can you get me this? Can you connect me to this? Can you get me this information, right? So this quadrant is to maintain the drone and so forth. Typically, we will carry um, one, two, three, four primary drones. You want to get on scene and get a drone in the air quickly. And I can attach uh, into the vehicle's video system with my drone controller here, and I can fly from right there. By putting a thermal imaging camera on there, if you've got a building, if there's smoke billowing out of it, and you first pull up on it, you don't know how big the building is, where it's coming from, you just see a lot of smoke. Being able to uh, circle the whole building with a drone gives you good situational awareness. Using a thermal imaging camera, you can actually see, you know, the fire's in the back corner. That's, that's where you need to go. Or look, it looks like the, the roof is burned through here. Don't walk on that area. Drones can be a game-changing new tool, but Mike's also prepared for when drones become a threat. People have the, their hobbyist drones, and they'll fly these things, and if they fly into an airspace where, where it's a controlled airspace, where there's a, uh, air tankers dropping water and helicopters and that sort of thing, and if that drone flies into a helicopter, it could kill the, the helicopter pilot. It could, it could bring down a helicopter. If they see a drone in there, they've got to bring down all their flights because they don't know what that drone is going to do. So this thing is called Aeroscope, which is, which is made by one of the manufacturers who makes the drones. But this has the ability to, um, with its antennas, track the drone activity itself. So if there's a drone in the air, I'll see it here on my screen, and it'll show me where the operator of that drone is. So I can use this with, with my brothers and sisters in law enforcement and say, there's an illegal drone operation going on. They're right here at these coordinates, and they can go and they can shut that down. We're out there to put the fire out, but we can't put the fire out if we can't fly. In addition to thermal imaging, drones excel at mapping the large expanse of a wildland fire, from tracking the spread of the flames to surveying their devastation. Let me show you the inside of the vehicle. But this is really where the operator would sit and, and make use of all the, all the technology. Drone pilots go out, fly to do mapping. They come back with an SD card that has all the pictures they've taken. I put it in my, in my card reader. I'm using the software I have on here to go and stitch those things together, create an image, and maybe display that image outside to the commanders. But meanwhile, this vehicle actually is equipped with mini cameras. There's a camera 
on the front, the rear, and both sides, as well as on top of the mast. So I can see to maintain situational awareness of what's going on in the incident command post. But I can also at the same time see what the firefighters are doing on the inside of the fire. So this could be my firefighters on the inside walking around. This image is from an augmented reality system capable of transmitting a live feed from a firefighter's point of view. Firefighting is not like what you see on TV. One, you can't see. Two, that smoke itself is driving you back. That's, that's what's uh, killing people, it's the smoke. This is called a see-through mask, and the concept is that it takes a high-speed thermal camera, attaches it actually to the firefighter's uh, face piece, and then inside there's an optical uh, frame. It's kind of like a half of a pair of uh, eyeglasses, and inside this is projected outlines of what you see. If your vision is occluded by smoke, the thermal camera puts a green line around what you would be seeing. What that allows the firefighter to do is literally see through the smoke. We did some tests out here, and we found that they were able to four times faster find the victim. You know, every firefighter who tried it was like, wow, as soon as that thing's ready, I want one. Giving first responders new abilities, like seeing through smoke, is one way technology empowers them to do more with less. Another way is putting more powerful control in the palm of their hand. The entire vehicle is built like a smart home. It's a smart vehicle. So the entire, all the systems on the vehicle operate on an IP system. My iPad connects to it, and I've got control software on here that lets me control the entire vehicle from an iPad. Besides being neat and space techy, it's actually very useful because it allows one person, one operator, to spot the entire vehicle. Instead of having to park and sit inside and raise the, raise the mast, I can actually come outside the vehicle and use my software here, adjust my, um, my satellite dish, or raise and lower the mast from the outside. I can, I can handle all the control systems, even though set the temperature all from, all from here. The M-Star vehicle is also loaded with communications and networking technology connecting the whole team to keep them one step ahead of the fire. We're so used to going everywhere and having Wi-Fi signals. Well, you go to a fire, which may, have, uh, may be out in the boondock somewhere, may have impact, phone wires or your power cables might have, might have burned through. So bringing that, that type of infrastructure with you is critical. You can see we have satellite capability up here. We've got a 50-foot mast that has antennas on top of it that allows us to paint an entire uh, Wi-Fi bubble around an incident so I can extend it uh, to several acres and provide connectivity. So if I can take from inside the fire, not only being able to have the firefighters see through the smoke, but have them take what they see and transmit it out to a screen out here, you wouldn't be able to transmit that image out to someone outside the area. So instead of me listening on the radio saying, did he say get out or did he say, you know, get me some coffee? I don't know what he said. But if I see in my screen, it's very, very unambiguous. And even if I'm in a stress situation where my brain's not operating that well, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm, I'm scared, what have you, it's very unambiguous. Hey, it's time to evacuate. Mike's vision is clear. A high-tech mobile command center linking the whole emergency response operation while making them more efficient at finding the flames and fighting them. But his own time in the trenches has informed one more crucial addition for weary firefighters. We have a coffee maker and a, uh, and a refrigerator because, you know, a happy firefighter is a uh, effective firefighter. When we look at, at what we can do with technology, what we really need to do with technology is make it a tool for good.